Hello everyone, my name is Timo Dumla and I'm Developer Advocate at JetBrains. In this video, we're going to talk about the new Docker integration in C-Line. As a C++ developer, you might be using Docker, for example, to build and run your projects in isolated environments configured in a certain way. Here, I have a machine with Ubuntu running Docker. If you want to know how to set up Docker, I can highly recommend the Docker documentation. I have already installed Docker on this machine. We can verify that the Docker engine is running on this machine by typing docker info. For this demo, we will use an Alpine image. Alpine is a Linux distribution which is very lightweight and efficient and therefore very popular for users Docker images. Here's the Docker file of this image. As you can see, we are setting up the default versions of our compiler, CMake and so on that come with Alpine Linux on top of the official Alpine 3.7 image that comes with Docker. We can now build this image and verify it's there in our list of available images by typing docker images. Now, let's say we have a C-Line project. In this case, it's a very simple C++ program that simply prints the host name of the machine it's running on using uname, which is a Linux-specific system call. We can compile and run it, and it's printing the host name of my Ubuntu machine. Now, let's say we want to run the same project inside the docker container, running our Alpine image. From CLine 2021.3, this is really easy to do, as CLine now comes with full Docker integration. You can build and run your project by using the built-in Docker toolchain. To do this, go to Settings, Build Execution Deployment, Toolchains, click on the plus sign to add another toolchain, and select Docker. In order to connect to the Docker daemon, click on the cogwheel to select how you'd like to connect to it. The recommended setting is the first option, which is the default setting for your operating system. On Linux, you connect via a Unix socket. Once you do that, you can now choose a Docker image to run the project on. So let's select our CLine Alpine image we created earlier. You can see that CLine recognizes the compiler version and CMake version installed on that Docker image. Now, in order to actually use this toolchain to compile and run our project inside a Docker container, we can either drag the Docker toolchain to the top to make it the default, or better, we can create a new CMake profile. To do this, go to the CMake settings, copy an existing profile, change the toolchain to the Docker toolchain we just created, and click OK. When you add a CMake profile, CLine needs to reload the CMake project. You now get an error because the CMake version inside our Docker container is lower than the CMake minimum required specified in our CMake lists. Let's fix that. OK, now we can select the Docker profile in CLine's run config dropdown. We can now compile and run the project inside the Docker container. You can see that our program now prints the Docker container ID as the host name. Now, this is really easy and seamless integration. The way it works under the hood is that CLine is mounting the project directory into a temporary folder on the container's sandboxed file system. It's a huge improvement to older versions of CLine, where the only way to talk to a Docker container was to set up SSH inside the container and to use CLine's remote host toolchain, which is less efficient and more complex to set up. If you're using Docker on macOS or on Windows, setting up Docker is a little bit different. You will typically be using Docker Desktop. But as far as CLine is concerned, it's exactly the same thing in both of those operating systems. Here, we have exactly the same project as before. Let's go to the toolchain settings again. You can see that on Windows, there are quite a few more options here, and there is a separate video about those different Windows toolchains. For now, the important thing is that we have the Docker toolchain here as well, and it works just the same as it does on Linux and macOS. The only difference is that now, if you go to the Docker settings behind the cogwheel, the default method to connect to Docker is called Docker for Windows. And on macOS, it's called Docker for Mac. The rest works just as before. We have the same Alpine image as before set up here on Windows, which is the one we're going to use. If you use CLine with Docker on Windows, there are some additional settings that we recommend to get better performance, although they are not required to make things work. First of all, you should have WSL2 installed, and you should use a WSL2 backend to run Docker. Then, you should install your own WSL2 Linux distribution and enable Docker integration with that distribution. In this case, we're using Ubuntu. You can see I have it installed here by typing WSL-list in the console. 
then in the Docker desktop settings, you need to go to resources, WSL integration, and then you can select integration with that specific distribution here. Finally, you should put the source code of your CLINE project into the file system of that distribution for optimal performance. So our sources should be located somewhere inside backslash backslash WSL dollar backslash Ubuntu. In this case, they're just inside my home directory in that image. Now, this is all Windows specific. If you are on Mac OS or Linux, you don't have to worry about these settings and locations. One last thing that I'd like to mention and that's useful on all platforms is that CLINE now comes bundled with the Docker plugin, which gives you even more options. You can find it in the services tab at the bottom. Double click on Docker to connect the plugin to the Docker engine. You can now browse all your containers and images and the plugin gives you access to their properties and a lot of useful information. So that's how you use CLINE with Docker. If you don't have CLINE yet, but you'd like to check it out, you can download a 30 day free trial of CLINE on jetbrains.com slash CLINE and give it a try. Thanks for watching.